Hey guys, this is Sean from Korea, and for today's weekly quantum video, we'll be talking about why is IonQ the best quantum computing company? And the evidence comes from the IonQ attending the Morgan Stanley TMT conference. Alright, so we'll be talking about what was covered in the conference. So IonQ CFO Thomas Kramer and the head of IR Jordan Shapiro attended the Morgan Stanley TMT conference on March 7th and they attended the last tier one as well. So I'll be introducing what the questions was and what the IonQ's answers was. So please introduce your company and which industry it's involved in. So quantum computing, definitely. And it's a computing approach that can solve problems that are either impossible or unsolvable in a useful time frame. So for example, we know that the current solar heat conversion rate is very low, which is between 20 to 30%, but the plant conversion rate is 80%, which is like four times better than what we can do. So the nature knows how to do this, but we cannot model this photosynthesis because it is too complex for classical computers. So we are still in this limit. So the quantum computers can be a breakthrough, so it could possibly solve it. So there are two mainstream technology to realize the qubits. So the first one is superconducting method, which is using the past 60 years of uh, classical computer tech and knowledge. And there's Eon Trap. So the above two are the mainstream method to realize the qubits. And Chris Monroe, who is um, uh, one of the two founders of IonQ, was working on the atomic clock, and he realized this could be used for quantum computing. So he realized the first ever quantum gate which is now the basis of IonQ. So he's very talented and we also know the Johnson Kim is one of the big pillars of the IonQ's technology. So the IonQ is basically the Chris Monroe plus Johnson Kim's more than 25 years of quantum computing research and their uh, capabilities and skills. So next question is where is the company on the roadmap now and what can we expect in the next few years? So their answer was Moore's Law states that as the computing power increases, the classical computer's cost decreases, requiring a large number of transistors. But in the case of a quantum computer with only 70 logical qubits, in case you don't know what the logical qubit is, it's the perfect qubit without any error. So with 70 of logical qubits, it is possible to achieve the highest level of modern supercomputers. So there's logical qubits versus physical qubits. Physical qubits are mostly uh, useless because it contains high error rate, but the logical qubit is very useful or it doesn't have any error. So we want to achieve the logical qubits. And most quantum computing companies emphasize of qubit counts, which is the physical qubits, not the logical qubits. So you want to know that. And IonQ already has 25 useful qubits, which is algorithmic qubits. So I know this is a, a number of qubits that are giving the reliable result, but didn't get to the error correction. So it's not the logical qubits, but like a below level of the logical qubits. And it outperforms other competitors by several times. So IonQ is very good at quantum computing and its qubits are very uh, unique and are better than other com competitors' qubits. So the goal is to achieve 29 AQ this year from 25. So four algorithmic qubits increase, which means uh, one algorithmic AQ increase means two times of uh, more computing power. So two to the fourth power is 16 times better than the last year. So the concept of algorithmic qubits informs the public about useful qubits and not so usable qubits. So what do you think about this concept and error correction? So Thomas Kramer answers, a precise standard for what a quantum computer does is needed, and IonQ thinks algorithmic qubits can serve as the standard. So when you give the same problem and increase the number of qubits one by one, good performance comes out up to a certain level. And when you go beyond that level, the performance becomes constant due to the noises. And that level is the level of AQ that the quantum computer has. So that's how you find the algorithmic qubits of the quantum computer. And in order to have more computing power, we need to have more algorithmic qubits. And currently, IonQ's goal is to improve and increase the quality of qubit itself, fidelity of qubits, and then it will introduce the error correction to create a logical qubit with multiple physical qubits. So physical qubit overhead to make one logical qubit depends on the error rate of the qubit itself. So if the qubit error rate is high, it takes many physical qubits to make one logical qubit. So in case of IonQ, uh, it's been demonstrated that one logical qubit needs only 13 physical qubits. But in the case of of competitors, specifically they mentioned Google, 1,000, 10,000, or even 100,000 physical qubits are needed. I think it's um, in the level of 1,000 to 1. And anyways, they need a lot of physical qubits to create one perfect logical qubit. And this is very difficult because 
I know the best superconducting method uh, corporation, IBM, only has 433 qubits on it. So you cannot even create one per perfect logical qubit with the current architecture. So therefore, this method is very outdated and will, will not work in the future or will require a lot of time. So when our competitors emphasize the number of qubits, which is uh, essentially the physical qubits, which is meaningless, IonQ says that's not quite right and emphasizes that their number of qubits are not the same as IonQ's qubits. So this is important to note. And then people think about that quantum computers will be possible only when there's a more breakthrough in physical research. But Thomas um, answered that no more research breakthroughs are needed because we already have all the materials. We just need to engineer it. So in case of IonQ, it is currently only necessary to gradually improve the quality of qubits for now. And the next big step is to introduce error correction when it comes to scalability. And then uh, the next big step will be to build larger quantum computers with photonic interconnects, which is basically networking or connecting numerous quantum chips to create one large quantum computer. So currently, IonQ is not introducing the error correction because the cost is greater than improving the fidelity of qubit itself. So there's uh, three steps. First is to um, improving the fidelity of the qubit itself and then introduce error correction and then apply the photonic interconnect to increase the qubits very large. In terms of revenue generation, IonQ already announced the booking of 2022. So what are the applications that IonQ have developed? So Thomas mentions about optimizing error loads with Airbus, which is a very complex problem, which the modern classical computers is not able to solve. And then the next project is the, uh, studying for the self-driving with Hyundai Motors. So the goal is to solve even the exceptional cases, such as Tesla colliding with a truck because it was difficult to see because of the sunlight. So quantum computers are basically very good at machine learning, so figuring out what to do with the data. Also, at the time of the first quantum computers, there were huge devices. Recently, IonQ is introducing to reduce the size of the quantum computers. Why is that important? So the answer, computers should be small. If ENIAC was so large and it remained, there would not be any developments. So the classical computers wouldn't have developed like this. Since IonQ's goal is to miniaturize the quantum computers, it will not use other freezers like what the superconducting method companies are using. So IonQ's QPU can be operated in room temperature and is currently the size of a kitchen refrigerator, which is very small compared to other competitors. And will, it will continue to miniaturize the quantum computer even more so it could stack the uh, QPU in the server rack. And what applications can hybrid computing can be used for. So IonQ is currently, so IonQ is working with Dell to bring hybrid computing to Dell's customers, which are basically uh, the large corporations. So current computer operating systems know problems and distribute them into operations that CPU and GPU can do well. But IonQ's goal is to add the quantum availability and provide quantum computing power in a timely manner when it is needed. So I expect the revenue from these large corporations using the hybrid computing will soon be realized, which will greatly help uh, increase the IonQ's revenue in the future. So there was a plan for the first manufacturing facility in Seattle, which will be completed in first half of 2024. And there was also a merger and acquisition of entanglement networks. So what's your, what's IonQ strategy? So the search for a place, uh, having a rich in talent led to Seattle. And their goal is to manufacture a properly commercialized quantum computer, not a computer that was assembled by, assembled by the researchers, but having um, more durability and more properly commercialized. So entanglement network acquisition. So ENN is a company acquired in January and it researches quantum algorithm verification and how to optimize and run it in a different hardware. So IonQ will utilize this team to increase the efficiency of running the algorithms in current QPU and also in the near future multi-core, multi-QPU architecture and also in the long run for the specific algorithms. So basically ENN are composed of software and compiler experts, which will help IonQ to uh, efficiently uh, optimize and run the algorithms and also to uh, realize the photonic interconnects, I believe. So in the Q&A session, someone asked that, will IonQ go full stack? And I think he doesn't know IonQ that much because it is already full stack. IonQ is not just making the SDK because they're 
many good of them. And operating system applications, they are already making it. And quantum, uh, and someone else also asked quantum cloud, quantum service, and quantum system sales. These are three major uh, revenue streams for IonQ for now. So which will have the biggest revenue growth? So Thomas answered that uh, so far cloud and service has been big, but when quantum computers are commercialized and available for sale, they will be the biggest sales because quantum computers are very expensive. They are like eight to nine figures. But in the long run, as we already know, that classical computers have bigger software market than the hardware market and quantum will be the same. So the software will provide greater value in the future, in the long future, and software sales will grow even larger. So IonQ already knows that, and that's why IonQ is going for the full stack. So someone else also asked, do you have other M&A plans? And um, Thomas said, yes. Companies that could accelerate the IonQ's technology roadmap, they are the con candidates of M&A plans. So in the near future, the roadmap to 10 to 20 years from now is much more complex, so they'll need more talents. So they're open to further M&A plans. So my thought overall is that experts say 70 logical qubits could reach the current superconductor levels. And from the IonQ's uh, tech roadmap, it'll be sometime near 2026 when error correction is introduced to reach 256 AQ. And also Google versus IonQ, IonQ wins because I already told you, Google needs uh, 1,000 to million qubits to create one perfect logical qubit. And the best one among the superconducting method, IBM only has 400, so they cannot build any logical qubits for now but IonQ already have 32 qubits and they only need 13 so theoretically they could create two or more logical qubits so we could uh, simply compare and see IonQ is the best and IonQ's qubits have a lower error rate their first step is to gradually lower the error rate to increase the IQ which is they're doing re right now and then introduce error correction and then introduction of photonic interconnect to create a very big uh, quantum computer comprised of many QPUs and we know that D-Wave Spaghetti and Continuum is having a very difficult time because of the macro situations and key personal living. But IonQ is doing a lot better because it's acquiring, acquired ENN, established a manufacturing facility, and they're expanding its global base everywhere. So we could see that IonQ is outperforming other comp competitors. So my personal opinion is that currently the leading group has begun to be distinguished, which I think only IonQ and IBM will survive uh, and lead the group. So IonQ always proves its supremacy with results, with clear roadmap and confidence. So we know that for now, but we have to monitor it constantly to make sure that IonQ is doing great. So for the technology uh, roadmap, we know that in 2025, they will have 64 algorithmic qubits. And we can see on the comment two, it employs 16 to one error correction. So, so this 64 algorithmic qubits, I expect to be close to the logical qubits. And then on 2026, they will have 256 logical qubits. So between these two years, we'll reach the level of current supercomputers. And from their slides, we know that uh, their three-step plan is already applied in the uh, roadmap. So phase one is error reduction by improving the fidelity of IonQ's QPU's qubit for now. And then they will go to error correction, which is expected to be applied around 2025. And the last step will be the modular scale link which is uh, realized by using the photonic interconnect which is expected to be applied on 2027 so we would have to monitor this and then photonic interconnect is uh, networking many qpus by using the existing photonic and optical fiber and switching technology so they'll use the uh, optical fibers and optical switch which Jung Sung Kim is very good at so he has experience of building largest um, optical switch in the world so we know that they already have the talent and the skills we just need time so today I talked about why is IonQ the best QC and for the evidence I used the IonQ's uh, interview from the Morgan Stanley TMT conference so I'll see you guys in the next uh, quantum weekly video please subscribe leave a like and comments thank you for watching